What I'm going to do now, though, is I'm going to bring on my guests, inshallah. My guests have done some research into the timings of Fajr and who would have thought there has been so much debate and foresight in the timings of Fajr, inshallah. So what we'll do now is introduce my guest, Brother Sh- Dr. Shahid. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Thank you very much for having us on the show. No problem, brother. We're really interested to hear what you have to say. Would you like to introduce your colleague? This is Azgar Hemraj. He's got a specialism in IT systems and also in photography. MashaAllah. Why do we need a specialism in photography? Let's start off. Tell me a bit about the project that you guys have done. Well, this is really the story of how a group of people came together mm-hmm. to see what we could do to enable communities to come together on a unified time of Fajr. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why do we need a unified... Why is Fajr not unified? Well, when when our interest in this began about seven years ago, um, we became interested in, in, in how to determine the time of Fajr. And, and having researched and, 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 and heard a talk on it, the, the base way to determine the time of Fajr is by observation. Yeah. And and so we became interested in, in this idea, and a friend of ours uh, was experienced in observing the time of Fajr. He had already scouted some beautiful locations outside of the city, on the east, beyond the eastern border. And so we asked him to, to take him to take us with him, and we went mm-hmm. and, and and began to become confident in identifying the time of Fajr through observation. Yeah. And then, as we came back and we became more confident, we started to compare our findings with different timetables produced by different masajids and organizations in the city. And it was disappointing in some ways for us to see, well, there's such a difference in the timetables. Uh, You know, in the middle of the summer, there can be more than 40 minutes difference in the different timetables produced by by different mosques. Mm -hmm. And and, and we thought this made us us sad. Mm -hmm. So if it's based on observation, surely does it make a difference? So you know, let's if if it's based on observations and everyone is observing it, why do we need to have a set like a set criteria? Why it was there a need to unify it? Well, th- there was some excellent work done back in the late 80s, and in in, in 1991 there was a timetable that was distributed, and and we really commend our our uh, our leaders for mm-hmm. doing that. But over time, things have diverged, mm-hmm. and of course, we need timetables in order to determine when when we, for example, in the month of Ramadan, we stop eating, we start to read our Fajr prayer. Mm-hmm. But different communities use different calculation methods to approximate the time of Fajr. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they use calculations. So we've already said that it's Fajr should be done on observation. Why would people have used calculations then? Is there not a set science behind all of it? Well, we particularly where we have uh, a long history of yeah. where we've lived. Different communities have gone out over many, 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 many years mm-hmm. and gained lots of observational data. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, there will be some days maybe where it would be cloudy. Yeah. And so when you have all this data, you try and find a pattern by which you can see which it's following. And e- in equatorial countries, for example, in the Middle East or in the Indian subcontinent or Malaysia, where there are large Muslim populations, because they're around the equator, the timetable of Fajr follows a very good pattern throughout the year. Mm-hmm. But if we were then to apply these calculations in our latitude, because we're so much further north, this would then add error into our timetables. Okay, alhamdulillah. So we've sort of raised the premise of, of the project, but explain to me what was the project and how did you carry it out? What was the methodology? What was the thought behind it and everything? Well, there there, there are different problems with all these different timetables. Mm-hmm. There's no proven statistical method, either in, st- you know, in, in scholarly, religious scholarly circles or academic circles. Mm-hmm. And then we thought, well, look, if we arrange for lots of people to go and observe the time of Fajr, then you have the problem of observer bias. Yeah. So, for example, if there was a group of people that said, well, I'm sure I saw Fajr at one time, yeah. and another group said, well, I thought I saw it at another, somebody may, else may, well, may well say, well, look, did you all spend the same amount of time allowing your eyes to acclimatize to the low light intensities? Mm-hmm. Somebody may well say, well, are all your eyes the same? Do you all have the same visual acuities? Mm-hmm. Somebody else might say, for example, well, are you all similarly experienced in determining the time of Fajr? And therefore, that becomes problematic too. So we wanted to find a way of using a method by which we could gain observational data that was open, that was transparent, and that was available for critique. And when my colleague suggested 
let's set up a camera mm -hmm. and take photographs of the night sky. I, I have to be honest, my eyebrows raised. Mm -hmm. But I, in that moment, I didn't see the wonderful vision by which we can gain open data and invite people of the whole city and throughout the world publicly to come and look at those photographs mm -hmm. to be able to be enabled to determine the time of Fajr through those photographs. And so what we did is that we started to explore the use of using camera technology mm -hmm. and, we f and we discussed different cameras and different options with their manufacturers. And we then bo we then we then bought this camera, which mm -hmm. is a specialist all night camera designed specifically for astrophysics research, yeah. and has been mounted now permanently in Birmingham. And we've got gathered data throughout an entire calendar year, with photographs daily spanning at least you know around about ninety minutes with daily photographs in one minute increments, mm -hmm. and have published every single photograph on our website, which is www .openfudger O-P-E-N-F-A-J-R dot org. Okay, so before we get into your results, I think we need to break it down for some of the listeners out there. Shall we break it down to the basic level? What is the definition of Fajr? How do you observe Fajr? The, the Quranic definition is simply when the whiteness of the day becomes distinct from the blackness of the night at dawn. And this is in, in the Quran, chapter Al-Baqarah, verse mm -hmm. 187. MashaAllah. And then in our hadith literature, mm -hmm. this is further, it's, it's further explained yeah. by which when we see a horizontal spread of light on the eastern horizon. Okay, so we're saying a band of light along the horizon. That's correct. Yeah. Um, sometimes we can see light horizontally, uh, vertically, sorry. What about that? Now, our hadith literature also describes the difference between the false dawn yeah. and the true dawn. Okay. So... When the descriptions in our hadith describe the tail of a wolf mm -hmm. or the vertical light, that's called the false dawn. It's interesting, though, that in our latitudes, where we are in Birmingham, we will only see this vertical light before sunrise in the autumn time. But it is visible throughout the year in equatorial countries like in the Middle East. Okay, so what were the results that you found after? You, so you've set this camera up and you've taken pictures every day now. Was it minute by minute? Minute by minute. And you've seen the differences in the light levels, and you know you've got all of this data. What was the conclusion? Well, first of all, what we did is that we wanted to validate the data. Yeah. Now, in order to do that, we invited. We wanted to be as open and inclusive as possible. We sent a written postal invitation to every single mosque and Islamic organization in the city, mm -hmm. which was over 170. Alhamdulillah. We invited scholars. We invited academics. We invited world experts on this topic to look at the photographs minute by minute mm -hmm. and validate the data by voting on the time when they thought that photograph most accurately represented the time of Fajr. We then commissioned a professional statistician mm -hmm. to then look at the data and formulate a annual calendar because we have data points spanning all the different seasons throughout a calendar year. Was there a consensus out of curiosity? What we did is that we took the times yeah. when the consensus panel overall yeah. thought the most amount of times, th so it's, it's the modal value yeah. on any image where they had the most amount of votes. Was there a big dif uh, differentiation? Did you notice that as uh, from a, a data set? Did you notice that, let's say, one mosque may have said it was at X time, but another mosque was saying it was half an hour, two hours later, sort well, of? There was very little difference. What we did is that, as well as using the mode, yep. we also compared the median and the mean. So yep. these are all different ways to identify a kind of a middle idea. Yeah. And there was only a minute between all these different methods. So there was a very there was a there was quite an accurate spread of of understanding on the times of Fajr. So what are the results? So we're coming up to the month of Ramadan. So it's nice that we can sort of bring this up because, well, firstly, why is Fajr important during Ramadan? You know. Fudge is such an important time as it helps us, you know, know when to stop eating. So firstly, as we're coming up to Ramadan, my brothers and sisters, we should all be paying a lot of attention to when Maghrib and when Fudge are. So let's talk a little bit about that. What were the results this Ramadan? What in your calculations as Fudge is? So as I said, these aren't calculations yeah. really. These are based yeah. on actual okay. observations. And um, the, 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 for example, if we say l the 6th of June, yeah. the time of Fajr on that day is 2.34 a.m. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd like to, to suggest to listeners to look at the timetable on the website because we have a full annual timetable there. Mm -hmm. So you know this, two th so is this the, say, it's the 6th of June? Is it the same every 6th of June every year? That's correct. Because the relative path of the sun 
yeah. as it goes across the earth yeah. in our latitude is recurrent. Yeah. Because it's the same on an annual basis, then this time will can, timetable can be used in subsequent years. There's only a very small difference between years in which there's a leap year. Yeah. But because that's, that is such a small amount, you can use this timetable on an annual basis. Okay, so we're saying this year it's 234 on the 6th of June. Was that correct? Correct. Now, that seems quite a bit earlier than what I, from my memory, what a lot of timetables said last year. You know, from last year, I think a lot of timetables were saying 3.30. So we're talking an hour difference. It wouldn't be, no, it wasn't so much an hour difference. Yeah. The maximum time difference was around about just over half an hour. Mm -hmm. And that is in the middle of June. So that's at the summer solstice on the 21st of June. Mm -hmm. um, so, so there was some some time to for, for saying, for example, saying just after three o'clock as mm -hmm. the time of Fajr on the 21st of June. And our table here states, states 2.30 a.m. And obviously these Fajr times are applied all year. They're not just specific to Ramadan. You took observations for every month, every... So, and you're saying that this can be applied every year. So when Ramadan now swings back around to, let's say, December, you're going to have accurate fudger timings for that as well. That's right. And in, similarly, we would also encourage people to look at the photographs because we have these minute-by-minute -minute photographs, all of which are published on the website. Mm -hmm. And people can actually go and make their own observations through the photographs and see the time, all the times, all the photographs are time-stamped. Mm -hmm. So they can see day by day and minute by minute the times of the, 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 the visual, what, what people are seeing around the time of fudger. So my last question, and just to wrap it all up, I think, would be what difference does your geographical location make? Because we were having a quick discussion about this. Does it matter if you're in Birmingham or Manchester? Can Manchester use this timetable? The way that the the path of the sun is determined around the Earth is based on latitude. Yeah. So if a city was the same the, to share the same latitude as Birmingham, yeah. then we can apply this timetable. However, what we're hoping is by making this research public and by showing the the buy-in that has already been achieved from so many different Muslim communities so far to implement this timetable for the month of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. We're hoping it will stimulate research in other cities throughout the UK and throughout the world so that we can establish unified prayer timetables for all cities. Um, that's an actually quick interesting point because w have the Islamic countries not done similar research to this or... Are we, you know, this project, I haven't looked much into it in terms of have there been similar projects around the world or...? To date, we have not seen any um, any published research mm -hmm. which uses a camera, which we have used, mm -hmm. to determine the time of Fajr by, uh, by, and by making all this data public and mm -hmm. open. Alhamdulillah. I think um, what I want to also do is maybe open up the phone lines to anyone that wants to call in and maybe have any questions, inshallah. So if you do have any questions and want to call in, do call us on 0121-772-8892 and you know, join in the conversation, inshallah, because I'm really appreciative to the research that was done into this and I was highly impressed by what I read. That You know, at the end of the day, that this work is crucial because like you said, if there is a variation, theoretically, even though we were doing it with good, sincere, open intentions and we were being based off the best knowledge we had, had at that time, our fudger timings may have been wrong last year for when we were you know, doing our Ramadan. And obviously, the closer we get, the more information we have, the better we can combine that with our sincere intentions and inshallah. Because at the end of the day, the goal is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what better way to do that is to make sure we're striving towards being as accurate as possible. And as well as that, as, uh, I mean, the, the accuracy of our timetables, of course, can't be underestimated. Mm -hmm. The diligence of our worship is so important to our faith. Mm -hmm. But there's a bigger goal as well, mm -hmm. because the the textual defini de definition of Fajr is unified mm -hmm. throughout all different schools of thought. And through this research, we have the opportunity not just to establish an accurate prior timetable, mm -hmm. but to gain buy-in from all communities. And in order to enable the Muslim community as one to become united on such a prayer timetable through dialogue and through this open data model. MashaAllah. So next year's project, unifying Eid. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that the goal? I think uh, we, we hope that such research catalyzes yeah. work which can formulate a blueprint for intra-faith relations. Because, I mean, we, we ha all have an aspiration by which the Ummah speaks with one voice. Mm -hmm. We look within and we see our strengths, we build upon them together. Mm -hmm. We look within, we find areas to improve, we improve upon them together. And, and I'd like, just like to, to, to kind of aim towards an aspiration and to imagine this idea in the month of Ramadan mm -hmm. where I close my eyes and I think, you know, the sky is dark, mm -hmm. 
and the city is quiet, the roads are quiet, and through different mosques, mm -hmm. through different households, at the same time, the adhan, the call to the Fajr prayer, is all being recited at the same time. And I think that, co that collective energy, that, that collective unity, will enable us to strive as an ummah. That, that, you know, that is the, almost the definition of an ummah, you know, to be united and to be as one. And I think that's important that we do try to strive towards that. And, you know, the, benef the, the other thing that I, I've really, you know, was appreciative about your work, it's open. You know, you invited critique. You invited people to come and look at your results. It wasn't like you did. You undertook the, you know, you undertook the um, project, and then you were like, okay, we've now come to this conclusion. You can either love it or lump it, but you know, we're right. You've said, look, this is what we've done. You've invited all the mosques, regardless of you know sectarian uh, backgrounds or whatever it was. And obviously, this, there was a great consensus achieved. If you're saying the differential between a lot of the um, chosen points were a couple of minutes at maximum, so I think project like the projects like this are really important. I think this should, hopefully, our listeners have listened and thought, well, this is really important because if we're uniting the ummah in terms of fajr prayer, that's a step in towards uniting us in an overall position as well. And inshallah, that's something that we all can take away a little.